Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our uh, college prep panel. In this panel, we have uh, five precious guests, and uh, they are uh, they are some of them are studying college, and then some uh, some of them already in college, and they will answer your questions regarding the college prep college preps, which is the probably the most uh, one of the um, you can say. In, in students' life, one of the most important steps. Uh, they already uh, go through the steps, college uh, application steps, and they are in uh, very renowned colleges. Uh, and I'm going to get answers after uh, introducing our panelists. First, uh, I will ask them to introduce themselves. And then after it, we will get the answers. By the way, audience, uh, Yes, we have QA button. So at the uh, you will see Zoom controls, you will you will see QA uh, button. When you click on it, you will see um, uh, you, will, you will see you can ask questions. Okay. So let's dismiss this one. Uh, just give me a second. Um Yes, let me start with the, uh, in alphabetical order. So our first uh, panelist is Bennett, Bennett Leo. Bennett, will you please introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everybody, I'm Bennett. I'm a uh, CS major at UT Austin in the Turing Scholars Program, I'm wearing the shirt right here. Um, let's see, I've, I've been teaching at AlphaStar for about four years in, in CS, and I just finished my first year at, uh, at UT Austin. Great. Uh, by the way, uh, Bennett didn't say it, but uh, you can also tell about your competition background. As far as I see, you are you are in platinum. You uh, said you suck up platinum since 2016. Is it no? So 2000, 2000, uh, Yeah, 16, right? Okay. Yeah. Great. Yes. Okay. And uh, as far as I see, you're also a math guy, right? So, uh, as you will see, uh, most of our uh, panelists are also met, both CS and math people. Okay, anything you would like to add, Bennett? Very short introduction. Okay. I think I think that covers it. Um, but I guess I'm also from the Bay Area. If I think okay. a lot of us so, are from there, so. Then I will ask a couple uh, 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 warm up questions. Next. Chris, it's your um, turn. Yeah, hey, um, I'm, my name is Chris. I'm, uh, I go to Princeton University. I'm a rising junior, so it's gonna be my third year next year. Um, I've been teaching at AlphaStar for, I think, what was it, like two years or three years, Fatih? Probably, uh, I don't that, remember either. Okay. That's fair, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I did a lot of like CS competitions. I started off in high school doing like AMC, like AV competitions. And then I realized that I liked like Yusako a lot better. And then I switched over to that, like around like junior year of high school. And then I made like camp, I think like that year or the year like after that. And then um, other than that, I, I do CS in college and I focus right now on like basically like, very broadly, like machine learning, like computer vision, natural language processing, that area. I'm from like the East Coast area. So I, I live in like New Brunswick right now. So yeah. Okay, hey. thank you, Chris. Next, Flora. Hi, everyone. My name is Flora. So I'm actually going to be a rising freshman, I guess. <laughs> so I just finished the college application process. Uh, I'll be going to Stanford next fall, uh, probably majoring in computer science plus a lot of other sciencey stuff because I love science. Um, in terms of CS achievements, I guess I could say uh, I got into use of code gold. Uh, I also did Amy a little bit. <laughs> But most of my focuses were on science. So uh, I'm actually a national finalist for the Earth Science Olympiad. And I'm also a semi-finalist for the Siemens Research Competition. Great. Now, Jeannie. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeannie. I just finished my first year at UC Berkeley. I'm currently pursuing a double major in applied math and statistics with a minor in data science. 
Um, this is my first year teaching at Alpha Star. Um, and then in high school, I did mainly did math. And then I did the chemistry Olympiad in one year, I think. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you. So our next panelist is Junhee. Uh, hello, my name is Junhee. Uh, I'm an undergraduate at MIT, uh, studying computer science and math with a minor in music. Uh, most of my high school experience has been in math. Um, we just did the AMC series. Yeah. Okay. Junhee, can you tilt your uh, computer a little bit or video? Oh, I mean, oh sure. I can move it can... forward. Great. So, yeah, we can be able to see you because of the probably the light is too bright. Oh, um... if you turn to, to, uh, to the other way, the camera, the other side a little bit more. So, it's going to help a lot. Uh, there's not too much space, but maybe I can like plug in a lamp or something. Okay, no problem. Okay, if it doesn't work, don't worry about it. Okay. Okay, next. So, uh, I, I, I will ask a couple more questions to you to as, a, as warm up questions. Uh, they are, okay, by the way, in the meantime, our audience can start asking questions and also they can upload the questions. Uh, we will start with the most popular questions. Uh, I'm going to go that way. Uh, please see the, again, Q&A session. Uh, Q&A button at the, at, at the, uh, in the Zoom controls. When you click on it, you can ask your questions. Okay, now, okay, here, are our, uh, here is our question. So uh, please tell us about your um, uh, high school uh, contest competition experience a little bit more. So what kind of things did you do? Maybe projects, some uh, Olympic kind of questions starting. So how did you start it? Okay, yes, let's start from the other way this time. Uh, Junhee, is it okay to start with you? Yeah, uh, so is it just like what I did, how I started or? Yeah, you can start from how, how you started, okay? How you started? And how is how how was it uh, during your uh, maybe middle school and how high school and so on? Yeah. Um, okay. So in terms of math competitions, I only did math competitions. I didn't do anything else. Uh, I started because it's just something that they made all the people do in my like public school system. Uh, so just like at some point they were like, do the AMC ten, uh, and then I did it. I think. I was fortunate and like I discovered that I was like okay at it and then I just kept doing it every every year until I got into high school um so yeah or until I got into college so yeah I did um the AMC series every year from seventh grade to 12th grade yeah just um very good just... so do you regret it to do the competitions no no I mean like I I was in those like I was uh I was okay, told okay. to take those competitions because I was like in like accelerated math classes and they were like these would be good for you and so obviously like I had an interest in math I thought it was very fun like I enjoyed okay. taking them yeah a lot of learning okay next Jeannie hi so <clears throat> my main thing was also math i started that in middle school like just like Jeannie, i was put into accelerated math program or sorry math classes so i um what's it called i was in the math club and then i did you know math counts and then i'm from florida and we have this math competition called mu alpha theta it's like very popular in florida even though it's a national competition but mainly floridians do it so i also did that in middle school and then in high school, um, did Amy, and I was on the Florida Armel team and more Mu Alpha Theta. Um, and then one year I did the Chem Olympiad. Um, and then I was also really into like going to summer math programs. So I went to Stanford's math program my the summer before my senior year, and then I went to Ross the summer before my junior year and I think those are like the big math programs that I did in high school um but yeah that's pretty much it math wise for me okay so our questions are coming up so uh, I'm gonna choose the questions and ask you guys okay so we can uh, answer them live 
our panelists. So you don't have to type anything and then answer so we can uh, type live. Don't worry about it. Uh, if you like the question, by the way, our panelists, if you like the questions, you can also upload, so you have a chance. Uh, okay, uh, who is next? Flora, yes. Yeah, so uh, I guess competition experience, I did a lot of use of code, and that was because I had an interest in CS from middle school, because we had like a local CS learning club going on, and I thought that was really fun, so uh, I kind of got into it. Honestly, I did a lot of science competitions throughout the high school years because I have a huge interest in science. I love science. I love research. So that was, uh, I did a lot of those categories of competitions, I guess. I also dabbled in a little bit of math. Uh, I'm not gonna say I was particularly good at it, but I tried my best and that's what counts. <laughs> okay, so uh, you said local competition, oh, sorry, local club. Was it, uh... <laughs> Uh, you mean the school club? Oh, so uh, it was the Girls Code San Jose Club. So it's oh, actually a club based at the local middle school and the high school students actually yes. come over and teach. So it was really cool. Great, nice. Okay, who is next? Uh, Chris, your turn. Yeah, I like have a similar experience as Flora with math. Like I remember at first, I was also lived in Florida for the first year of high school. So the first thing I got into competitions and stuff like that, was when I did Muaf Theta and like the club was really great and stuff like that. And then I, and I did that. And then afterwards I realized that Muaf Theta was like only a Florida thing. Cause I moved up to New Jersey and no one was doing it. So I started doing like Amy, right. And it, like, it, like you, you, um, what is it like AMC. Right. And I got really frustrated because I think what would happen is I would submit my contest and I would look at the problems and I'd be like, Oh, I knew how to do like all of them. Like I killed this contest and I would get my grade back. And I made like a consistently made a dumb math error on every problem. And I ended up getting like, like a third of what score I thought I got. So I got really frustrated with that. And I really like how in Yusako, it's like they don't penalize that heavily for like um, arithmetic or like, like just like dumb mistakes and bugs in your code. So I switched over to that and I found a lot more success in that. Um, towards the summer of sophomore year, I started doing contests. And I remember just like doing a lot of problems from like the, like from gold division. And then when I moved to plat, I did a lot of platinum problems just in my free time. And then I did well in competitions, so that that happened. That was a lot of fun. Um, and then also, like I, like part of the school, I, I go to Princeton High School, Bedford High School, and it's really close to the university. And a lot of schools in that area during the time when I was in high school, you're allowed to dual enroll in like classes at Princeton if you've like taken all the classes in CS in your school. So I was dual enrolled in like some classes at Princeton, and like that's also was a, a big like part of what I spent time on in high school. And I think a big reason behind why I got into like Princeton as I did was because I like took a lot of classes already and I had like a rec letter from like a professor here. So, yeah. Great, thank you. Uh, Bennett, your turn. Yeah, so I think I started coding first um, unlike a lot of these other people. And I started in like sixth grade or something with Khan Academy JavaScript, um, which <laughs> I'm sure some other people have done as well. Um, but I, I, I eventually started doing a little bit of robotics. And at that point, I was referred to by my robotics coach to, to do some use code because um, she thought that I would, I would have a good time doing it. And I did. Um, it was also kind of sad because I, I guess the first contest, I was, I was very sad because I, I wasn't able to read or write to files. Um, and thus, I got a score of zero, which felt really bad. Um, but but I, I slowly got better. And I, I'd, I'd learned some algorithms as well. Um, and I came to AlphaStar as well as a student um, to learn for a while. Let's see, in, in my freshman year, I think, I think it was my freshman year, um, I got into, into Platinum, which was, which was pretty nice. Um, and then after that, I started teaching at AlphaStar. Additionally, um, I joined my, my high school on, in my sophomore year, Harker. And there I joined the programming club where we wrote problems, made contests, which was super fun. Um, and then I guess other programming things I did. I, uh, I joined a, like a web development group at my school um, and we built kind of web apps for, for the school. Um, there was like a payment system, a system for like signing for announcements, um, for, for tracking volunteering hours, that kind of thing. Um, and that was also a really great experience. Um, because I think it, some, sometimes competitive programming trains not the cleanest code. And, and web development is also not necessarily always the cleanest, but it, it gives you a little diversity. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. And then in terms of the math side, 
I started doing a bit of math during high school. Um, I never really put too much time investment into it, but but it was kind of a fun thing and the contests were, were fun. So I, I was in the math club for a while. Okay, thank you. So uh, let's start our parents' questions. Uh, I guess you, 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 can, you can also see the questions. Uh, our panelists, can you see the, the questions? So the first one is the with nine votes. To the all young panelists, what is the most important achievement you think got you into, the, into these awesome schools? So think about it. And the whoever wants to answer can start. Well, yeah, I can just say that for MIT, there's a really, really high acceptance rate for people who've made like USIMO or like USIMO camp. So okay. it's like 70 to 80% for USIMO qualifiers and similarly for oh. the USIMO, qualifi USIMO camp qualifiers. So I think in terms of like, what was the biggest thing is like for sure, just doing well at math competitions, I think. Um, but I think MIT is like kind of unique in that situation. A lot of schools care a lot less about that kind of stuff. Okay, great. So anybody else? I guess uh, really objectively for a lot of schools, you can, uh, you can like kind of talk about your achievements that you feel are more personally relevant to your story. And I wouldn't entirely put it on one thing that got you into an awesome school or anything. It's more of uh, your passion and drive for the subject. So for me, I really enjoyed geophysics and earth science. So. Uh, probably me making like earth science camp was kind of a big factor in that but there's also like a lot of different ways you can share uh, your passion and show that to colleges without uh, directly putting it on one big greatest achievement okay by the way uh, you can also uh, say your uh, colleges at the beginning so they can people can relate faster so by the way flora uh, is going to stanford so it may be uh, uh, from that perspective might make more sense, by the way. Great. So next, who is next? Yes, Bennett. So um, I go to UT Austin with the Turing Scholars Computer Science Honors Program. Um, I think the big thing for me, there was no single um, item, but on the on the application for the, for the program, there's kind of this just box that says like, please talk about your CS experience. And I think what the big thing was there, um, was just demonstrating a, a big, obvious interest in computer science, um, and basically showing that I've one, I'm interested, but two, that I've I've had a decent amount of experience, and that that I, I'm willing to to learn more and to do so quickly. Um, with like what I found out later is that the Turing Scholars Program like actually has the professors read the read the um, read the applications. So my essay for that was actually I think pretty terrible in that it was just a list of facts like I did this and then I did this and then I got interested in this and then I did this extra thing which is not how you're taught to write essays at all um just but I like wrote an it like an engineer right like a, <laughs> yeah like, like an engineer that's good but I but I wrote it um I wrote it late at night in like two hours because I, I didn't even know really what I was uh, what I was getting into um but when, once I uh, what I believe happened is that is that um I demonstrated interest because obviously I've, I've done a lot of computer science and I think that that was kind of the the, the biggest the biggest uh, the biggest piece. Um, I can go next so I go to Hi. Berkeley and so for me I didn't have a lot of like really flashy competition awards so but I think by my attendance to like the summer math program that so showed my interest in math. And then like, as Flora said, like every person has an achievement that's more personal or unique to their own. So I think for me was, I was really involved in um, community service work in my local Ronald McDonald house. So I uh, started my own club and high school where we would volunteer there and we raised money um, all the years that the club was active and raised a couple thousand dollars like all went towards the house and we um i also like really grew the club to it was like a really big thing at school so i think that was a personal achievement that was really important to me that i love to talk about in my college application essays 
Thank you, Jeannie. Chris? Yeah, I can go last. Um, so I go to Princeton and I like, I think what Flora said is a really good answer. Like it's not about like any specific achievement. It's more just about like, if you do what you're passionate about and your like achievements and your like resume kind of show that, or like your application kind of like shows that you're really passionate about this one thing, then it really helps. Like for me, like I truly, like, I think the reason I was able to practice like every day for USACO and like never like, um, like get discouraged because it was because I legitimately loved doing algorithm problems. I really like enjoyed it. And like, it was a lot of fun, right? So um, that also carried over like when I dual enrolled in Princeton because I dual enrolled in like the algorithms classes at Princeton. And a lot of the base like groundwork was already laid there because like USACO actually prepares you really well for like a lot of like um, college algorithm CS. So like I was doing well in this class and then like I asked a lot of questions and I kept like talking in class just cause I was really like curious and like the professor really liked that. And then I like, like all that kind of resulted, I think, in me getting to Princeton because I was just had this story to tell of like someone who like genuinely really cared about CS and like really like loved doing algorithm problems. So yeah, like I think the biggest thing for me though, like the one biggest thing was probably getting that rec letter, but like I couldn't have done that if I didn't like do USACO and like pursue everything that I like really liked and like, like taking the class in the first place. So yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so everybody answered, right? That's what I see. Uh, our next question. So did you have any research or internship or uh, entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurial ex experience? Yes. Okay, I guess I can start off. I have a lot-ish <laughs> research experience. Uh, like I said before, I really like science and uh, for a lot of my summers, what I did was I really explored different branches of science I was interested in. So I kind of like rotated and hopped in and out of a lot of different science lab. So uh, a lot of random research experience under my belt. For example, I've been working at an earth science, so a seismology lab. I've worked at um, a bio lab studying evolution and fish. Um, I've worked at a CS uh, lab where we really looked at hardware and how we could use it. And in extending bioinformatics. And uh, recently I've been working at a Stanford lab. So we focus on this uh, disease called pulmonary hypertension. And that's where I've been for the past couple of years or so. Thank you. Who's next? Uh, I can go. Um, uh, is this like, so I can give two answers first of all. I, I don't know if the person who asked this question meant like research before applying to college or like research now, but like, before oh. applying to college, uh, as far as oh, okay. I understand. So uh, before applying to college, if you have any experience in research, internships, or entrepreneurial. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't think I had like any research or internship experience. I think I did work a summer at Princeton just helping them build software. And I want to, like, that's, I forgot to mention that earlier for some reason, but um, that was really actually good for me. Like, um, I worked with this, it was, I didn't like, I like, it was, I was very new to coding back then, like in like, in terms of like a big company and it was, I was learning a new framework. So the progress I made was actually very slow and looking back at my code, it wasn't like the best thing I've written by far. And I'm not like super proud of it, but like, uh, like, again, I was able to get really passionate about it though. And I knew the ins and outs of how this thing worked. So I was able to talk about it a lot and that really helped. Um, later, like earlier, um, like I think last year, oh yeah, la last year for January, I worked at Facebook. And I don't think I could have gotten that internship if I didn't like do this like project um, that I did like in high school. And like, it's just like, I think again, it's like, they don't even like, I think for a lot of internship companies, if you're looking for internships in college, right? A lot of these companies, like um, they really care that you have a story to tell and that you're able to talk about it rather than like, like whether what you did is flashy or not. So like, yeah, I did do one internship in high school, but like, if you do do an internship in high school, it doesn't need to be like flashy or like any of the really cool, like, like entrepreneurial, like, like type research stuff. Like, as long as you can talk about it and you have a good story to tell, like, that's really impressive. You can talk about it in your, like, essays and in, like, your interviews for college. That's important. Uh, next. I can go. Um, so, like Jeannie, I went to Ross. Uh, Ross is not really a research program, but it is very intensive. Uh, and you do a lot of, like, a deep dive into especially abstract algebra. So I guess that's, like, the only thing that we would consider research. In terms of actual research, I didn't do anything. It was more like, it, or else it's basically like a, um, you know, full camp, I guess. Um, I think 
the only thing I can say is like, I think one common like misconception is like people think like if you like haven't done prior research or anything, like when you get to college, people like just, you just can't get into research if you don't have any experience, but that's like very not true. A lot of people just start freshman year in like a random lab doing something. And then they like end up doing it for a long time, liking it, uh, getting a lot of experience that way. So um, I'd say there's not a like a necessarily a huge correlation between prior research experience and like research in college, um, nor is there like a huge necessarily a huge correlation between doing research in high school and like what you actually end up doing uh, in your life. So uh, that's all I can say on this. I think. Yes. Who's next? Um, I can go. So I also didn't really have any formal experience like in the question listed. Um, I did have one thing that was kind of unique to the school program I was in. I was in IB at school. I'm not really sure if other people are familiar with that, but for IB, we have to write a research paper um, in the last two years of high school. And what I wrote was basically what I learned about in raw. So I don't know, I think like I kind of connected, I did connect that in my college applications um, in an attempt to show a continued and demonstrated interest to him. Great, Bennett? Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Um, so I did do an internship uh, for, for one summer. Um, I'll be honest, I don't think there was, there was too much going on there. Um, so I, I certainly, yeah, I, I was there um, I, I did the work and that was, I think that's all I can really say. Um, I'm not sure if that had any effect on, on the uh, college applications. Um, with regards to like the entrepreneurial experience, so I didn't have explicit entrepreneurial experience, but um, I think that to some degree, at least the um, web development group that I was in, um, in high school um, provided that because we did a lot of things that you might associate with like a I don't know, maybe a mini startup. Um, so we would have a team of 13, 14 programmers and we'd work on different websites, um, build those things. We also did product releases at, at the school. So we'd announce them to the school and that was, that was pretty fun. Um, so we had to work on that. We had to work on uh, making sure that everything complied with um, standards put forward by the school um, and do all sorts of negotiations and other shenanigans. So I think with that respect, um, or in that respect, I, I guess there was some level of entrepreneurial experience. And I think that at least helped me in, um, in kind of uh, showing that I, I have this kind of internal drive um, to, towards uh, programming and, and trying to make things that help others. Okay, thank you, Bennett. Our next question is, re is related to what is the, uh, what is the weight of USAC on any kind of math and computer science competitions, nationally recognized competitions to get into top CS programs. Uh, what is the weight, uh, what weight do top CS programs give to non-CS related extracurriculars like leadership program and community service? So because the, the person wants to uh, prioritize, that's uh, what, what, what the question is, uh, how to prioritize it? So which one should, should uh, 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 says, which one should I prioritize? Yes. So this time I'm going to go with alphabetical order again. Then it, we can start your, with you. So this is for UT, UT Austin Turing Scholar Program. Okay, so let's see. Yeah, so the question I, I believe is about um, non-CS related extracurriculars. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll list mine. Um, so there was, there was the web development group, Parker Dove. Um, and then additionally, uh, in my junior and senior year, I was part of the gender sexuality alliance at my school. And in my senior year, I was part of the student council. I think that I'm not really sure how much those, those explicitly helped. I think it showed that I had interests beside computer science. Um, I'm also planning on it's, it's between minoring and majoring in economics. So I think it just showed that there was kind of some other depth um, to my interests. Um, well, I guess, okay, what, what was the other part? It was, how does that help uh, with top CS programs? Um, yeah, I didn't, I'm not sure if that actually ended up helping in the end, but I do think it helped me get a more, um, more complete high school experience. 
and it gave me a lot of like life skills in general that um, that can be useful in college, regardless of whether it helped me get it or not. Okay, thank you. Next, Chris. So the first question was how critical USACO, USACO, Amy kind of competitions to get to top CS, top CS colleges. Uh, and the second one is the other non CS related activities. Yes, Chris, it's yours. Yeah, so um, for me, I think the main non-CS activity I did was like swimming. I was part of like the varsity swim team in both like my high school in Florida and also the one in, in Princeton. Um, I really don't know. Like I, I honestly like don't know exactly why I got into like Princeton and what parts they value, but I know that for a lot of um, good CS schools that um, for a lot of the good CS schools that are like parts of like Princeton's a pretty liberal arts school but they have a really good CS program too for schools like that they do like to see like a person with like not just CS in the resume like a lot of other things and just being able to talk about a lot I think for me like USACO was really good on my resume not because it was just on my resume but because like I was able to like every, like if I had an interview with someone who was more technical and who knew a lot about CS then I could really like back up the fact that I did CS by like we could talk about like USACO and programming and I could like offer something to the conversation. Also, like I know a lot of my peers who are like in that like same algorithms class, like really struggled to like, keep up with it. But for me, it seemed almost easier than contest programming because I didn't have to code and um, I just had to do things in theory, which is like great, you know? So I think USACO, like, like kind of like what Bennett said, like USACO really like, it's like the things that I learned from there really go far. Like legitimately, like um, the technical interview for Facebook was like not challenging at all because of the fact that I did USACO, like, I think it was one of the questions like reverse a string. And I think like, like you could do that from like gold division, right? Like, or like, I don't even, I don't know how it works these days, but like, like kind of like Bennett said, you know, like doing USACO and stuff like that, it just helps you like, in the long run if you want to do CS. Cause like the skills you build there are like actually like important and like useful. Yeah. But aside from non-USACO stuff, I think I just, I think I did swim team. That was about it. But I put in a lot of hours for swim team. And um, I think some colleges really like that too. So, yeah. Yeah, I can add to that, uh, that you said actually uh, sales contest kind of experience. It's the main theory track uh, in college when you look at it. So you, I also benefit when I was doing PhD, even, even, even I, I was doing PhD. So in the real life too, I'm using the algorithms in the real life. So that helps a lot. Just a short addition to yours. Next, Flora from Stanford uh, point of view, yeah. Yeah, um, well, I also technically did get into MIT, so I guess I can talk about both a little bit. So uh, for Stanford, they're really looking for uh, well-rounded individuals. So they do put weight on CS programs and like, oh, like great, you have USACO, so that shows that you have interest in CS. But um, I guess for me, they did put more priority, I guess, uh, in my non-STEM activity, which, which was earth science, because I was really interested in geophysics. Uh, I would really say that this comes down to uh, what are you interested in and go follow what you're passionate about. Because uh, I decided to spend most of my time like chasing like research and like chasing all these answers to like questions uh, that don't exist, et cetera, et cetera. And, even though it was in some people's eyes, it might be a waste of time. <laughs> I felt like it was really personally fulfilling and uh, it really helped develop uh, who I am now. So with Yusuko and Amy, if that's what you want to do and you're really interested in it, I would honestly encourage you to go for it. Uh, on MIT side, MIT, even though it's an engineering school, it's really much, uh, they also do look very highly on your outside STEM interests. So if you have some other interests like in music or in something else, it just, it helps them know that you're not a robot, <laughs> I guess. And it helps them realize that you're not, you're more than just a person sitting in a room coding or doing math. And you're someone who has friends and goes outside and does like things that they enjoy because they're passionate about it. Yes, uh, and next, Jeannie. So I didn't apply with the CS background, nor did I apply into a CS program, so I don't know what I can really add here. <laughs> okay, uh, 
Junhee, would you like to add anything? Um, well, I guess one thing I can say is like, for a lot of these colleges, you don't apply to like the CS program. You just apply to the college and then like they accept you. So like in terms of getting into the CS program, that's like what you choose after you get in. So I think in that sense, like the most important thing is um, presenting like whoever you are through the application um, and hoping that it meets whatever like very opaque requirements there are to get in. Uh, I think one thing that's like very undervalued when it comes to like these like non STEM or like non technical accomplishments is like, uh, like it's really important for being like just like a well adjusted human being like the, the idea is like, you get to college after like having done a bunch of competitions and then like you might just be like, like totally unable to adjust in college, because like, you're just like unable to be a normal person so I guess. Um, even like outside of the perspective of like what the college sees in you, it's like really important personally that you have like things you do that you care about so that you're not just like, you're just not like, you're, when you get to college, like you're, you're a normal person and you're able to like fit in, like live an actual life by yourself. So um, yeah, I think that's about all I can say. I also don't have a computer science background before applying. Thank you. So our next question this time, uh, the math level. So what were, what were your math level when you were in ninth grade? Okay, let's start with uh, Junhee, this time backwards. Uh, um, so I finished calculus before high school. So I was in university math uh, from eighth through eighth to 12th grade, yeah. Okay, mm, wow. Next, uh, Jeannie. Well, I was not in university math. I think I was in pre-calculus or the first level of calculus. I think I was in pre-calculus, yeah. Next, Flora. Uh, I did Ultra 2 trade, so <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Next, Chris. Do you remember, Chris, do you remember ninth grade? Jeez, I really don't even remember like 12th grade, but I can try my best. Like, I think ninth grade, I was in like geometry. Or like maybe algebra two. I just want to add like, um, I like I started doing competitions and everything like really late. Like I was just in like I think in middle school up until like ninth grade of high school, I just like went to classes and like took normal classes. Like went to classes, like got done from school, practiced swimming, and then like played basketball with friends, and then just like went to bed. Like I did no math until like ninth grade, and when I started to do more with theta. So like if you think you're like a late starter, you're definitely like not a late starter. Like you can start this kind of stuff at any time. So I think I was in like, like geometry or like algebra two maybe in ninth grade. I'm not sure. Great. Okay, next, Bennett. Yeah, I would say, I think I'm around the same as most of the other people, but I, I just realized that I can't really remember exactly what math I was doing in, in ninth grade. I do know that in, in the year after I was doing calculus, but I'm not sure if I was explicitly doing pre-calculus the year before. Um, so, I did Calc BC in sophomore year is my answer. Oh yeah, I, I just wanna add that like, in addition to what Chris is saying, I think it's just, it's like nice to be in accelerated math, I guess, if you like math, it's really not necessary. I think it's just something I'd like to add. Like that was my personal background when it came to um, course, but lots of people I know have done really, really well at math starting not very early um, not being accelerated so it's just your personal like preference i guess thank you now our next question so have you ever thought i wish i, I, I wish i had known this earlier in your middle school or high school or during your college applications any regret, regrets that you had missed so let's start with the uh, the, the the camera order so I see first the uh, Flora uh, on my screen. Yes. All right. Um, <laughs> I guess anything I wish I had known earlier, maybe my interests <laughs> a little bit earlier so I would have like more time to pursue it. I still do have the rest of my life. So not sure about that. Um, any regrets? Yeah, I wish I actually went and attended some ASB parties at school because COVID-19 took a lot of those opportunities away and that was a little bit unfortunate, but it's okay. Yeah, 
Okay, thank you. Especially from a college application perspective. So you, you have any reg regrets? Yes, Bennett, I see you use. Okay, Flora, do you wanna add anything? Uh, not much from the college application uh, perspective, just do what you like doing and don't procrastinate. <laughs> just try not to procrastinate. Okay, I see Bennett second. Yeah, sure. So I guess if we're talking about the college application perspective, hmm, with I think my, my biggest regret may have been actually not exploring like other things earlier. Um, I love CS still, right? I'm not saying that CS is bad. I'm just saying I think I have a lot of other interests. Um, and I kind of had it in my mind for a very long time that like I'm a CS only person. Um, and that meant that I couldn't do not that I couldn't do, but I, I wasn't uh, as interested in pursuing other things. But I think I found out that I'm I'm interested in in a lot more than that. And I think if I if I realized that earlier, maybe my college applications could have presented a more um, whole view of who I am. That being said, I don't think I'm I'm not really that regretful of of anything. Um, with specifically the college application process, I would say like ninety percent of the time that people spend on college apps is not actually doing college apps, but like feeling worried about doing college apps. Um, so I think a, a good bit of advice might be to just write something um, and then <laughs> fix it later. Um, Cause I found that almost a, a good number of my essays ended up um, being very close to the deadline because I'd procrastinated too much. Um, so just, yeah, close your eyes and type until you have the word count and then fix it. Great, Jeannie? Um, so in high school, my honest biggest regret, and I always tell like I'm underclass in this, is that I think I was too focused on maybe like picking the right thing to do for college apps or picking the right extracurriculars because honestly, like these admissions people, they have seen so many people. I honestly think it's impossible to really stand out, but I think what's more important is to genuinely find something you're interested in and stick with it long-term, go deep with it, like do as much as you can in whatever it is that you're interested in. Um, and then as for like the actual college app process, um, my parents hired a private tutor for me or a private counselor for me. And personally, I regret like going through with that just because I felt like with a private counselor, you know, they really want you to mold you in a certain way or to like make you a certain applicant or you know something like that with your essays or how you format your application and i just felt like that really put me in a box and i couldn't really be myself and you know looking back now i don't really think i could have been as authentic as i could have been in my college app so that's another thing that i personally would have changed thanks i see chris yeah i agree with what like Jeannie just said like i think I was also really focused on like being really like I, I like I had this idea of like okay like I did swim and then I did like Yusako and like that was like Yusako was my main focus and swimming like meant that I was well-rounded and I like did them both right and I had this whole plan of like this is how I'm gonna get into college right and um I really actually didn't like swimming like I really disliked just jumping in a pool and just swimming laps for like three hours until my arms fell off like it was just not fun and I like I think my biggest regret is like not doing a sport that I liked um, I think now that I'm in college, like I've picked up a lot of different random stuff that I just really like, like I really enjoy, like I've gotten really into volleyball recently and that's been a lot of fun. And I really wish I like did that more in, in high school because that was like a lot of fun. And yeah, um, I think just this has been said like many times this entire time, but genuinely like pursuing your passions is like the most underrated thing ever because everyone just expects like, oh, if I do like everything right, I'm going to get into college. Right. But it's there's never like a checklist like. I think like Jenny said, there's like, it's impossible for you to like be so good at like having the perfect resume that you like stand out for college application people. But it is possible for you to stand out in like an interview when they ask you about like your interests that you can just go in like hours, you can just talk for like like hours just about something you're interested in. Like I think just doing what you're passionate about in high school is something I should have done instead of focusing on like what I needed to do. So yeah, I'm really glad I found you, Sako. I wish I found it earlier and like really like got into it because I, I genuinely love it a lot. So yeah. That's all the regrets I had. Yeah, I don't have too many regrets. Um, I think I like, like all these other people are saying, like I found something that I really enjoyed and I spent a, 
um, you know, whenever time I had, you know, whenever I wanted to do it, working on it. And then like I submitted the apps and it went okay. Um, I think one like legitimate thing that like kind of Flora mentioned that like we kind of passed off as like the non app related thing is like, uh, it's like one of the biggest things I regret is just like not like hanging out with friends like often in, in high school. Like it's like uh, so easy to like think like if you spend any time not like working on like whatever it is you're working towards that you'll just like fail at life. But like obviously in the grand scheme of things, that's not true. And also like once you get to college, like what happens, right? So I think it's just like, it's important to have like a healthy, like social life and like good mental health while you're in high school. And um, I mean, this is like hippie advice. Like it's easier to say the more detached you are from the process, but like, it's really easy when you're like in the throes of junior and senior year to be like, like, oh, like I've got to do everything perfectly. But like, really it's like more important if like you're not feeling it that day to just like not like go hang out with someone or something. So I, I think that's, just some genuinely helpful advice that I wish I would have followed. This is more of like a funny answer, but like, I really wish I like got a good haircut in high school. Like right now it's getting long, but like I look back at some of the pictures in high school, I'm like, oh my God, like that looks so bad. Like my hair was like a mop. I like didn't cut it for like years. Like I think I let, let it grow for like, like, like two years at some point. It was just, it's truly like just atrocious. And I had no good pictures from high school because of it. So yeah. Thank you. Our next question. So what is more important at these schools, the, like the uh, higher GPA in high school or higher number of APs? Yes. Um, let's start from the backwards then. Junhee? Um, maybe this isn't the answer you want to hear, but I really don't think both of those things by themselves matter very much. It's not like if you have a 4.0 GPA, like that's like your ticket. Or if you have a lot of APs, that's like your thing. Like, I think it would be ideal if you had good grades. Like there are some places that look for a certain level of achievement, but it's like all the other things that you do, like what time you spend doing, like being like a more or less unique person is like the most important thing. Um, I think a better answer to this may be like, just like take the classes that you want to take and then like at a certain level you'll like reach the ap level and like whatever you know, like subject you're studying and then just like try to do well at those um i think really i don't think it's a very important statistic um in the grand like the overall picture okay chris yeah i really agree with that answer actually i want to also like just go on a limb and say like if you're trying to balance like taking APs with a high GPA, you're probably above that cutoff that most colleges look for anyways at that point. Like, um, I think at some level, if you're doing well in your classes and you're not like, you're like, you're, if, you're, if it's obvious that you're doing well in your classes and you're like excelling, you don't need to have like straight A's to get into college. Um, so yeah, neither one of the two things are super important, but I do want to add that APs are really good for a lot of schools that give you credit for them. Like I was able to take a semester off because I like get got enough AP credit to qualify for like a semester of like college credit. So yeah. And I also want to add, like it makes college a lot cheaper. If people, if you can graduate, like if you can take a semester off then that's like one less semester you have to pay for college and college is expensive. So like APs have like a very, like, like they're not like, you don't need them to get into college, but like they give college credit, which is like a pretty big thing. So yeah. Okay, next, Jeannie. Um, so I'm, I'm going to answer this question with what my private counselor told me, so take what you will. Um, he told me that for GPA, you want to be in the top 10% of your class. And then he told me for APs, you, for example, like let's say I was applying as like a math background, right? So you would want to take all the APs offered math wise, right? Obviously, but then you also wanted to take um, some APs in history and English just to show that you have, you are more well-rounded. But honestly, like, if you really hate a class, I would not recommend taking it, even if you think it's gonna look good, because at the end of the day, it's just not gonna be good for you. Um, and then like, with what Chris said about APs, like, if your goal maybe is to graduate early, like, definitely that is something to look forward to, because um, for me personally right now, if I wanted to, I could graduate from Berkeley in three years with um, a double major too. And that's just because of all my AP credits. So there's like a lot of different factors to think about. Yeah, thank you. Next, Bennett. Yeah, so I think 
for, first off, I don't think my GPA was in the top 10% at all. <laughs> um, but aside from that, um, I think I'll, I'll, set, I'll, I'll go with kind of what Chris said as well with the APs. APs are important because they can give you like college credit and that kind of thing. Of course, it shows that you're interested in things, but honestly, with like a field of computer science, taking AP computer science, I think, does not necessarily show like mastery of the subject um, or that that you're um, that, that that's like your kind of your your biggest thing. Um, I will say though, with with APs, I got um, as well a lot of credit, um, which gave me enough kind of space where I think I can get a second major, um, which allows me to pursue my interests. So, kind of doing a bit of work in high school um, can can help you out in college. Um, and yeah, aside aside from that, I'm not really too sure about what the college admissions people would be looking for. Um, but I guess my my route certainly, um, I think my APs were more impressive than my GPA was, but that was for other reasons. Thank you, Flora, your turn. Uh, I really can't say much on the APs with college credit thing because I am attempting to figure that out right now. Um, I will say that I have recently taken AP, so uh, it was kind of a traumatizing online experience. So uh, my opinion is skewing a little bit on the negative side. Uh, I would just say APs are really not that important if you're looking to apply to college. Like, sure, they show interest and they're great, definitely for college credit. Hopefully I can get some of that. Um, but I would say, like, don't make your life revolve around APs. I know, like, a lot of people talk about, oh, this person took like 20,000 APs and that person took like 50,000. <laughs> but if you think about it, if you're taking APs in things that you really aren't interested in and uh, you don't want to pursue a lot of that time, you're better off using that time doing something you really like doing. Like, uh, I don't know, maybe you have a hobby in doing basketball or something, or you really like music, you're really better off pursuing those interests than cramming APs. That being said, uh, school AP classes are really fun. At least uh, it was in my experience. A lot of my AP teachers were really cool. <laughs> so uh, if your school has a really cool AP teacher, go for it. <laughs> hey, great, thank you. Our next question. Uh, this is for uh, CS people. So how did you prepare for USACO? Um, did you dedicate summer summers or uh, was it year round? Okay. Who wants to? I can think. Yeah, I can Chris, go ahead. Um, so what I did was like, I never did USACO until the summer of sophomore or like freshman, I think of sophomore year. Yeah, the summer sophomore year, I went to this camp in um like I went to this like summer camp. I don't remember what it was. And then like I got introduced to it. And then since then I kind of just like there was this like like I self-studied with this like book that I read. Um and then I also just like did a bunch of like problems. Like I just literally went through USACO and I did like all the gold problems. I did like all the plat problems. And then like I like did more problems after that. Sorry, let me close my notifications. And then um yeah, so I guess it was it was year round, but I like I just I think everyone's been saying this, but like I don't think like that you don't you it's like you need to do that in order to get into college. It's like I, I did it not even because I needed to, just because I really liked it, and um I think I got the most out of my practice doing that because I I also know people that like do a lot of problems as well, and like it's like difficult for them to like to, like do better because like it's one thing to like do problems and to just repeat things and just like force yourself to do it, and something to like truly like like it and just like really do them because you want to do them. So like, for me, it didn't feel like practice. Like I, I like, I had fun, you know? So I was able to kind of do it year round, but um, definitely burnout's a real thing. Um, I remember there were weeks where I like, there was like, I remember I would go week, like a week without practicing at all, because like, I don't know, like it'd be like the week after a contest and I did poorly. And I like felt just terrible about coding. I didn't want to touch a computer ever again. You know, I didn't like seeing an ID just made me like want to throw up. Like it was just, it was bad. And I just didn't want to code. Like you don't need to constantly grind every time, like take breaks take days to like hang out with your friends and do stuff. But yeah, for me, I think it was mostly year round. And I did, I did I'd like, I, I'm not gonna lie, I did practice like very hard, but um, it wasn't like 24 seven though. It was nothing like that. So yeah. Wow. Great. So I guess uh, you're done. 
Anybody who wants to add anything? Okay. Then uh, I'm getting to the next question. Um, did, did any of you make these in high school? Yes. Okay, we can start with Jeannie. I had one be in AP English language, like the hardest class I've ever taken. And then I had one be in IB French, also really hard class I took. Yeah, okay, next, Chris. Um, number high school. Yeah, I don't think I had a B, but I I had a lot of friends who like like had like I think I had a lot of friends who like struggled with grades like the beginning and stuff like that. Like so, it's definitely like you can have Bs and still get into good colleges. Like, but yeah. Junhee. Uh, I didn't have any Bs, uh, but like Chris, knew plenty of people who did uh, did well in terms of applications. Um, but also, like for context, like I went to a very not very good public school, and the thresholds were very low a lot of times. So that helped a lot personally. Thank you, Flora. I didn't get any Bs, but like uh, I guess I can reiterate what people say. Like if you get a B, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> You can still get into a great college. I know plenty of friends who have gotten B's and got into like uh, top tier colleges. So it's not the end of the world. It's okay. <laughs> hey, Bennett, I guess uh, your last one. Yeah, so I also got B's. Um, I think they're mostly in my Spanish class because I'm very bad at verb conjugation. Um, but I think there were a few scattered somewhere else. I'm don't, I honestly don't really remember. Um, yeah, I don't think, once again, I don't think it's a big problem. I know people who had Bs. I think the reason why people who have a lot of As tend to get into good colleges because they're good at studying and so are people who get a few Bs occasionally. <laughs> so it's, I think it's all, it's all the same thing. Great. Thank you. So our audience, again, reminders, uh, we have quick Q&A button at the, in your Zoom control panel. So then you can click on it, you can upload the questions, you can check the questions, you can upload them. And also you can ask your, own, ask your questions too. Yes, uh, our next question. So uh, our audience uh, is curious about who went to uh, public schools or private schools when, you know, during the high school, middle school and high school. Uh, yeah, Bennett, we can start with you. Uh, so I, I went to a, a private school um, in for high school, Harker. It's in the Bay Area. Um, I had a, I personally had a really great experience there. Um, that being said, obviously that's going to be expensive. And yeah, you, sorry, yeah. I didn't finish the. Yeah, I forgot to finish the question. Yeah, okay. The, the, the next, the next question was, uh, did it help with the math competitions? Okay, so the the school ran math competitions, which I participated in. It helped uh, with the math competitions. I'm not, it, they didn't Actually, really- How did the school help with the math competition? Yeah. Yeah, so I think I took classes. Um, okay. Yeah, that's it. And also you were homeschooled, right? As far as I remember. Yes, yeah. I was homeschooled for my freshman year. Um, so I'm not really sure how to define that question there. Okay, yeah. Middle school too, right? Yes, a little bit of middle school. Okay. This, uh, Flora? Uh, I went to a public school, so uh, it's a local public school called Glenbrook. Uh, so that actually puts me as rivals with Bennett. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I would say Glenbrook is a little bit STEM oriented. So we do have math competitions. Uh, all the teachers are quite aware of it. And if you took some of the math competitions, you could get extra credit. Unfortunately, my teacher never entered in that extra credit. So it's a little <laughs> disappointing on that end. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I can make some additions here. So it is uh, for our audience uh, from outside Bay Area, maybe Limbrook is one of the uh, top public schools in the US. That's why uh, it's on par with many uh, private schools. Actually, that's uh, like Flora said, Parker, Limbrook, and so on and so forth in Bay Area. Yeah. Yes, uh, Jeannie? Um, I went to a public 
school and my school is not helpful with like math competitions mainly because like Amy AMC essentially nobody knew what it was and I was from a city where math competitions was very unpopular and nobody really knew what it was so it was really like all up to the individual to go out and seek opportunities like that. Thank you. Uh, uh, I went to a public school. I went to um, like a pretty underfunded, not very good public school in the, like, kind of the middle of nowhere in Iowa. Uh, it was not very helpful in terms of math competitions, aside from the fact that like they were aware of what the AMC was and they like gave it to people who wanted to take it. Um, yeah, I don't know what the, the, the end goal of this is, but I think like background, it can help, but it also doesn't make a huge difference. Hey, uh, just the last one's Chris, right? Yeah, uh, I went to I went to two public schools. I went to Seminole High School in Florida. I don't know, Jeannie, do you, do you were we do you know Seminole High School? Because I think you went to school in Florida too, right? Or, okay, never mind. Forget about that. I just was curious because I, I I was doing Moab Theta too. I remember like there was like a Florida Moab Theta circuit. Sorry, there. I was frozen. Oh, <laughs> I oh, could okay. hear you though. Um, no, I I know what Seminole is. I don't go there though, but. Yeah, but I'm not like really familiar. I just know the school because of Moab Theta. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think more, like the, that high school, like that public school got me into Moab Theta because um, it, like it's a high school with like an IB program and a lot of the kids in the high school in the IB program did like Moab Theta. So like a lot of my friends kind of did it. So I was like, oh, I'll join the club too. So that got me started with math competitions actually. And like they did provide a lot of help. When I moved schools though, when I went to Princeton High School, there was a lot smaller math competition team it was like three people, I think, including me, maybe like, oh, no, 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 sorry, there were like four regular members, including me, and then like, there were like other people that like, um, would come take on with us, and it was a lot smaller of a presence, but um, it was still nice, I think most of the prep, the most of the prep I did for math competitions, I just did by myself, I like did contests and stuff like that, so yeah. Okay, next one. Um, let me see. Next one. So we have any questions. Okay, uh, this is again related to APs. What is the average number of APs taken? Yeah, you, you, you took in high school. Number of APs. Is Flora? Uh, I can count, I guess. <laughs> but uh, I Several. also would take my number with a grain of salt because. Uh, this is online learning COVID, so I ended up actually canceling a fair bit of my exams because I wouldn't get credit for them, and I don't enjoy online testing very much. But I would say like twelve plus a few wow. ones. Okay. I don't know actually. Okay, so just uh, roughly you can say twelve. Great, uh, Bennett. Yeah, so I don't really have, um, <laughs> I haven't kept track, so I'm not really sure. I think my number might be similar. Um, I can get back to you. I, I was just about to try to search it up. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, Jeannie, do you want to answer? I think that I took 16. Wow, 16. Okay. Or 15, Great. something like that. Yeah, 16. Great. Chris? I think like 12 to 16. This is like so long ago, but yeah, I think like 12 to 16 around that area. Like like 13, I think like three or four a year, I think. But also I was definitely on like the high end um, of my high school. So like, like even of the people I know they go to Princeton and people I know they go to other great CS schools, like that's pretty high, so. Next, Junhee? Uh, I took six. Six? Yeah. Okay. See, great. Thank you. Uh, another question. This is also about Yusako. Oh, outside of Yusako, actually, outside of Yusako. Uh, were there any specific contests you recommend? So, other than Yusako, any contests? Yes, Bennett. Um, you should all sign up for Harker Programming Invitational. <laughs> um, it's a great contest, local to the Bay Area, and I'm sure you'd all have. A great time there. 
Okay, nice, nice. There's also so, Stanford Proco. Um, yes, so uh, that's that's good. So uh, uh, let me uh, give you information regarding to that. Uh, actually, I can add at the end. So Chris, do you recommend any competitions? Oh yeah, so um, like I think Yusuko is good. Um, of course, what am I saying? Everyone knows that. And then uh, Code Jam is really good. Like I think the one that Google has, I think it's every year. It was I had a lot of fun. They send you a T-shirt if you if you do well enough, which is great. Um, except they send you it a few months late. So I got mine like I remember I did well in the contest and I was like, oh, they're gonna send me a T-shirt and I was like, heck yeah. And then like I forgot about this. This is like half a year later. I got it in the mail. I'm like, what is this? And I was like, oh my god, it's for Coach. So yeah, they're I guess they're not great with like the shipping, but um, that's fun. I think also I did a lot of live competitions. Those were really fun. I like, this is one competition and. Like they had this weird gimmick where every time you solve a problem correct, I was like, oh, you're in a room, you're like in a cafeteria type room. There's like a circle and you sit at the circle with your team and every team is their own table. And when you get a problem right, they give you a balloon that's like color coded for what problem you get right. And it was like a cool little gimmick. And like, I think live contests are just so much fun. Cause like after the contest is over, everyone like gets in like huddles, and like talks about problems together. And it's like a lot of fun. I think it kind of reminded me of Moff Data when I did it. And like, that's why I really liked it so much. So if you can, if your school has like the resources and you have a team, try going to a live contest. Like those are pretty fun. Then they like, there's some like local ones. Yeah. Right. Uh, Flora, do you want to add anything? Uh, to be honest, I don't really have that much to add because for computer science, I mainly did Yusuko and I guess I kind of went to a few like local hackathons with friends, et cetera. But I guess main thing is Yusuko for me. Okay, right. Yeah, I can add a couple of things. So there are individual competitions, which is like USACO track, and then uh, reinforces the same uh, sort of similar uh, concepts. And also uh, university ACM high school competitions. So some of them are local, uh, some of them are um, online. So you can, uh, you can have a team and, uh, and participate in those competitions. Uh, uh, those are Virginia Techs, so they, they are pretty fun. Uh, and then uh, you, you, you can have a nice, nice time in those competitions. Uh, Virginia Tech has uh, online high school uh, competition, Florida, uh, UCF, 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 University of Florida, Central Florida has uh, an online contest and also on-site contest. Um, yeah, some East Coast universities like that. And also, as far as I know, um, let me see, Harker, Stanford has Proco. Uh, CMU has an interesting contest. It's a little bit different. Uh, it's also fun. CMIMC contest. Uh, and then uh, local competitions like uh, Harker does, Harker programming contest, Saratoga, and a couple more schools are doing in Bay Area, as far as I know, uh, the, the high schools are preparing those competitions. And also as the uh, Alpha Star Academy, we have touring course. So we uh, also participate in uh, these competitions. Uh, this is for uh, platinum students, uh, free course for platinum students. We, uh, uh, we pick our teams and then make up teams and then join those competitions. It's pretty fun. Uh, would you like to add anything else? Um, okay. I wanted to add, there was a competition called Math Modeling, MathWorks, I think. It's an online one and it's like basically applied math. And I thought that was really interesting. That's, I did it once and that was another thing that made me like applied math too. Okay, great. Thank you. So our next question, uh, what summer programs did the panelists attend? So, your summer programs. Uh, I think that's before college. So, if you're going to college right now. So, before college. So, uh, Junhee, we can start with you if you like. Uh, I primarily attended Ross Mathematics program. Um, it's a six week summer course, um, essentially. Uh, where they emphasize like a self-oriented, like in-depth dive math learning type of thing. Um, I think it's like not something you should send your child to if they don't really like math. 
you like literally don't do anything except for math at the camp. So, um, yeah. Chris? Yeah, so um, I did this UCF summer camp. I don't remember, it's like SIUCF, I think it's called. And I did the competitive farming camp. I'm, I'm not sure if it's still called that, but um, that was a lot of fun. And they also did like the Yusuko training camp, like the, um, the finalist one. And that was also really fun. The UCF one was for a longer period of time. It was for like two, it was for like two months in the summer. And then the, I think it was a long time ago. And then the, uh, the I think Yusako camp is like only a week or like two weeks or something like that. It's very short. But um, I think the most I got out of those camps wasn't even like the things that I learned. Like, I think the first camp I went to, I definitely learned a lot because it got me started in competitive programming. But the biggest impact those camps had, I was just like able to like, like spend a lot of time people who really like coding and like make a lot of friends who like coding. And it, like, I think Yusako for me is kind of a little, it's a bit of a lonely activity because I would just go and like practice at my house and stuff like that. And um, the school didn't have a huge like presence of it. So going to camps, like net, let, like knowing people on the circuit was like really great. Cause like after a contest, I could just call my friends and be like, oh my God, like that was such a hard call. Or like, oh my God, I think I did well, like stuff like that. And I think camps are a great way to socialize if you really like talking about CS and having friends who do CS. Like I met a lot of my friends from that camp. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Jeannie? Um, so I went to Stanford's math camp. It's um, more commonly known as SUMAC. And then that was really fun. I really liked it. And I'm still in touch with a lot of people, or actually just two people there. Um, and then, oh, but SUMAC, the professor who taught at SUMAC was also a Stanford professor. And he wrote us college recommendation letters. So I think that was really nice of him. Um, and then I went to Ross and like Jeannie said, it was really intensive and it was really tiring. I don't think I've ever done like that much math for that long of a time at once. Um, but it was, it was okay. Honestly, not my favorite. Um, and then I also went to Awesome Math. Um, that was really fun, honestly. That's more of a social camp, even though you do learn co competition math. Um, and I met a lot of great friends there that I'm still in touch with. So yeah, that's for me. Yes, Bennett. Yeah, so I I guess my freshman year I, I went to um, I went to some some math camps, but then I I ended up TAing at Alpha Star then, and then I think the rest of the the rest of my summers were were some form of work, so um, working at Alpha Star and then doing an internship for one summer. Flora. Ooh, all my camps were like science camps. <laughs> So uh, I did Cosmos, I did SIP, which is the science internship program. Uh, both Cosmos and SIP are hosted at Santa Cruz. So uh, UC Santa Cruz, love Santa Cruz. Uh, I also did Earth Science Olympiad, like the camp for that. And it's also held in the summer. So I guess it kind of counts. I did that for three years. Oh my God, I did that for three years. <laughs> and uh, yeah, pretty much. And then last year I was working also doing like college classes. Sorry, Dr. Gelly, I'm like doubling those two. <laughs> I'm getting busted here. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, um, another question. Um, did you, oh, just one second. Uh, did you get any uh, mini scholarship? Yes, Flora? We can't start with you. Uh, merit scholarships. I don't know if like, uh, there's like the PSAT and uh, if you like do well on it, you automatically like get to draw for like the national merit uh, scholarship thing. So I got that, which was nice because free money is always nice. Uh, Stanford actually, Stanford, MIT, uh, Caltech too, I think, they rarely, rarely offer merit scholarships because it's usually need-based. So uh, yeah, did not really get any uh, merit-based scholarships from there. Yeah, anybody got merit scholarship, by the way? No, let's... Um, I kind of got one, not with Berkeley, that was with the University of Florida because I applied there. Um, it's similar to what Flora said, um, but if you did well on the PSAT, you got a certain score on the PSAT, the University of Florida would give you a full ride scholarship plus some money. So that's something that I got. Okay. 
And I know like a lot of other universities do that. I just don't know which one. Um, any other additions? Uh, yeah, so I had a really nice scholarship um, for, for high school, full ride scholarship um, for my high school. So I could um, go for free. Um, the Carolyn D. Bradley scholarship, if no one's interested in applying, um, very nice. Uh, for college, I got, I got a very small scholarship, not very small. I got a, I got a, I, I got a scholarship for being from the Bay Area. I'm not exactly sure what that was, um, but they said, you're from the Bay Area, um, here's some money. Um, so that's not really merit, but I'm not sure. And then also, I think on my first day of school, um, my program uh, gives some subset of the of the students um, within the Turing Scholars Program scholarships as well. So I, I was able to get um, a decent amount of scholarships through there. Thank you. So anybody who wants to add anything? Um, so I didn't get a merit scholarship from the financial aid like people. Um, MIT doesn't offer uh, merit-based scholarships in that sense, but uh, I have an audition-based like music scholarship. Um, scholarship. Uh, so that's a little bit of a different story. Um, there's also a lot of like alternative ways you can extract money from the college. There are a lot of things you can do um, like undergraduate research programs or like work studies and a lot of things that you can do to like generate income while you're a student. So. Um, Great, thank you, Junhe. Next question. So we have more than ten minutes. Okay. So we have we still have other questions. Uh, our audience, you can upload questions. We, uh, I'm trying to pick a variety of questions and also uh, trying to pick the favorite ones. So next question is, considering all the competitions that you do, how did you measure your time effectively in high school? So time management, okay, yes. Uh, Flora, how did you manage your time? Or didn't you manage your time? It's just <laughs> left that way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just kind of went for it. Uh, I really like procrastinating, but if I have like a lot of stuff to do, I will have to get them done. So <laughs> what I did was, uh, I remember, junior year before COVID-19 hit, I had like a lot on my plate. So I would just like, I would do a lot of work at my lab. Like I would be doing homework at my lab while I was like running experiments or something. And a lot of it is just not just like managing your time effectively and like chunking out time because, oh, this is when I'm going to do math and this is when I'm going to do like uh, work or something because that really doesn't work for me because I will find ways to procrastinate around them. And it's really just like uh, trying to do what you can and managing your quality, your quality control uh, for the stuff that you're rushing to get done. Okay, next, uh, Junhee, would you like to answer it? Sure. Um, I mean, in terms of time management, I think, uh, like my philosophy when it came to preparing for things, like when it came to competitions was just do it when I wanted to do it. Um, so in that sense, there wasn't a lot of time management to do. Like if I didn't have like a lot of homework or um, you know, I was bored or like whatever, I would just like do a problem if I felt like that was the thing I wanted to do. Um, so man time management for competitions is um, generally easy if you're interested in whatever competition it is that you're trying to do. In terms of like school, I think just like having a calendar or like finding some way to like organize yourself is really the only advice I can offer. Like everyone has different organization strategies and I think it's like up to you to figure that out for yourself. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, like I think echoing what Juni said, like it was very true that I like just, I think like I would finish my schoolwork and then I'd be like, oh yay, my schoolwork's done. I could just like, like head empty, just like do contests for the rest of the day. like. And I could just practice like it was a lot of fun in terms of how I manage my schoolwork. Um, I think be smart about what work you can do and what work you can't right like I like calculated like my grade and I was like okay I can afford to like not do homework in this class. Other, other things I did was I was just like like this teacher doesn't check homework like I, I don't know if this is like good advice but um I was like I'm comfortable in this class I know a lot of this work it's like a math class that I'm really comfortable in because I did competition math and I was just like okay like uh, I'm going to do homework during like 
class and like just like be smart about what I did work and stuff like that and also just like being like oh this teacher I know like doesn't check like this homework assignment super clip like closely so I can afford to like show less work and stuff like that I don't know it's very like unconventional advice but I, I like really just like got my school grades done like was smart about what classes I like did more work in and um yeah I like loved doing contests so I just did that for fun and it was great yeah I think when I was really serious about swimming though my schedule was like a nightmare like it was so difficult because it'd be like a lot of like swim practice and then I would come home and like do contests and that was just a whole mess but um after I started like like swimming less and less then um I, my schedule got a lot more manageable okay next is Jeannie um, so I was really involved in sports in high school. I did varsity lacrosse four years and I was on, um, I also traveled for lacrosse some years and then um, represented Northeast Florida at a competition. And then I also did karate throughout the year and I would um, teach at karate twice a week. So because of that, I had to be really good with time management. Um, so one thing that I found was really helpful to me was I would do my homework in class. So like second period, I would do the homework from first period. So essentially, I would just finish all my homework in class. And then <clears throat> with all the extra time, you know, after my extracurriculars or whatever would be put towards like studying for competitions or studying for extra hard tasks or something like that. So I really, you, I really had to like group a lot of things together. But sometimes I would also study for another class in class two. Okay, great. So uh, anybody who didn't answer it? Yeah. Okay, great. So, so I think my strategy was basically like a greedy algorithm. I maintained a to-do <laughs> list um, nice. with a bunch of tasks and then whichever task I wanted to do first or was due soonest, is what I would choose. Um, and I think that's still the way I mostly manage my time now. Um, and then aside from that, it's kind of, I have this tendency to kind of pile on more work every time I have free time. Um, so if, if things get a little out of hand, um, I just have to roll with it. And um, yeah, I think at some point you, um, at, at some point, not doing things starts to punish you and then you are forced to kind of do them, but it's a procrastination thing as well. Thank you. Um, our next question. Uh, how did you pick between math and CS when choosing majors or applying? So yeah, who wants to answer? Okay, Ben, if you can start. Um, I, there was not a consideration. I just like CS, so I picked CS. <laughs> yeah, you didn't have any that, that kind of trouble, right? Just right away. Okay, nice. Hey, uh, any other answers? I have a very specific day where I was like, I'm not doing math anymore, I'm doing CS. It was during specifically the day after I took the Amy test of like 2019, like during my like junior year. Um, I remember doing the test and I was like, oh, I think I got like oh, probably like 11 or 12 of the questions right. Like I know how to do 11 or 12 of them, right? I, could I was like, I probably make some dumb mistakes. I'd probably get like 10 right at least. And I compared answers with my friend. And I was like, I got this for this problem. He's like, no, 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 I got this. And I was like, no, how? Like I did this and I started saying things. And he's like, I was like, oh, like there's six like sizes, like like polygon, da, 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 da. And I keep saying that. And he's like, wait, 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 why are you saying six? Like it, there was a, it was a five-sided polygon. And I just like, at that point I was like, this is not for me. Like, I think math is for some people, but it really was not for me. And I was like, I, I don't, I don't want to do math anymore. So yeah, after that point, I started doing CS. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to say is that uh, for a lot of schools, especially like the tippity top schools, you don't choose your major before you apply. You just apply holistically and then you pick your major once you're there. Um, another thing I want I want to say is that uh, a lot of times, and especially for math and CS, um, I don't know how it is at other schools, but very true at MIT is that there's a big overlap between the degree requirements. So doubling is usually a very good option if you're interested in both. Um, and then the last thing I can say is like competitive math and competitive CS are very different from math and CS at college. So uh, if you go to college and you're like, oh, I've never coded before, but like I like CS conceptually, that's something you can pursue. And reverse goes for math. So um, I think it's something you can definitely decide in college as well. 
it doesn't have to be right now. Anybody who wants to add anything? Um, I pick math because I think once when I was a freshman in high school, I think I tried taking a Python class um, to learn it and I absolutely hated it. So that made me never want to do CS again. But then now I am learning Python again as a data science minor. So it's actually not that bad, but that is why I went with math. Anybody who wants to add anything? Yeah, we're switching to the next question. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, we may have one or two questions. Yes, uh, so this is, uh, so let me ask this one at the end. So uh, I can, I think we can, we can answer two, two questions. Uh, I think Jeannie already answered this part of the question, do you think private counselors are helpful? This college counseling side. Uh, yeah, Jeannie, you, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and start private counseling. Yeah I, yeah, I honestly don't think they're worth it. Like they cost so much and they're basically telling you everything that you can find online or by asking older friends. And honestly, I also feel like private counselors, they obviously have this pressure to get you into college. So they're going to tell you what to do in the way they think is best. But you know, it's not a one size fit all sort of, sort of thing. And what worked for one student is not gonna work for you. And you know, every person is so different and unique. I think the best thing really is just to stay true to yourself and just to do what you think is best for you. So you didn't find it useful. Okay, so helpful to you. No, for I think for like, or just for any of my essays, like I just always felt like he wanted me to write my essays a sort of way. And then if I wanted to write something that I felt was important to me, he would say something like, oh no, that's not good enough. Like, I mean, okay. maybe he was right, but you know, at the end of the day, I wanted to write what was important to me, you know? Okay, but the question is, it's not asking you liked it or not. It's it was it helpful to get into Berkeley or not? So that was a question. <laughs> I mean, like I really don't think so because okay. I think I could have gotten into Berkeley without. <laughs> okay, then that's fine. That's uh, so. Okay, anybody who wants to answer the question? Yeah, I think I did like SAT. I don't think it was private counseling, but it was SAT like tutor. It was like Princeton Review, right? And it helped me a lot for SAT. I think a lot of these tests can be kind of gamed. Like one piece of advice I was given from this camp was like, so it was so like, it was something like, if the answer choice is the word context in it, it's, mo it's more likely the correct answer choice. If it has the word context in it. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. So like, it, it taught me a lot of these like cool, like tricks and stuff with the SAT and it was like really helpful actually, I can't lie. But it also is expensive and like, it's a privilege to be able to afford something like that, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, any additions? Okay, I'm switching to the last question. So by the way, uh, we will have uh, for our audience, we will, uh, we will continue our college panels uh, with, uh, uh, with different panelists. So you can uh, ask your questions later on too, if we couldn't answer right now. Uh, this is the last question. And uh, it's sort of, uh, a nice one. Can panelists tell what couple of things that they think helped them to get into college? So think about other things that you didn't talk about. So some helpful hints for our uh, parents and students. Um, it comes to your mind. Okay, I give you a little bit of time. Yeah, after that, anybody who wants to answer can answer. Um, I can go first. So obviously, I think one of the things holistically I want to say is something that's been echoed this whole time, which is just something that really helps is having a passion for something and being able to display that. Um, that's like, I think, generally the most important thing. I think the second thing I want to say is, uh, I think one of the most important things, like personally, when it comes to applying for college uh, is like the parent student, parent, like child relationship, right? Like, College applications are expensive and they're time consuming. And it's like, you want 
both yourself as the student and your as a parent for your like child to succeed so it's like it's really important that like the parent child relationship is good like if you're like forcing your child to do things they don't want to do that's like really bad or like um i don't know if your like child is just like <laughs> not into it that's also really bad or like if like um the child is like actively rebelling against the parent or something that's also really bad right so i think it's just important to like um, maintain a good relationship with your parents if you are applying to college and um, as a parent like do everything you can to support your child if you're applying to college so I think that's the only thing I can say. Great thank you Junhee and anybody else? Yeah I would really uh, agree with Junhee's point like uh, I also think what is really big and like is trust and confidence in yourself and uh, your own personal story like you don't need to make up facts about yourself. You don't need to make up any stories about yourself. Your life is your life and uh, it's a unique life that no one else has lived before. And I guess really showcasing that story in uh, college applications. Like I wrote about Discord in one of my college application essays because I really like Discord um, and that worked. So <laughs> yeah. and you don't need to talk about a sob story or you don't need to talk about how you climbed Mount Everest or something but it's just the really the small things in life like I wrote about ice cream and another one <laughs> like it's the small things that make you who you are and I guess uh that was the thing that got me into college it's trust and confidence in myself and my story thank you so Chris I think you you you're answering too yeah um like everything that was said said by Junhee and Flora, like definitely, I think my parents also put a lot of stress like on pressure on me to get into good college during that time. And like our relationship had a lot of like fray and a lot of like stress because of it. And it's it's really like really not worth it. Like they're, um, college is important, it's, it's big, you know, like it's a huge step from high school, but it's also not like the end all be all. Like um, you're not defined, like I think I just want like people to like, like to really like know, like you're not, you're not defined by what college you get into. So you shouldn't spend your senior year acting as if like you will be like in terms of like career success and stuff like that, um, going to a good college will help you get an interview easier for a lot of companies if you want to work for a company. Right. But like as soon as you get into that interview stage, I don't think any interviewer asks about your college or anything like that. I don't think they even know about your college at that point. It's just you and them like having a conversation as like people. So like. Of course, opportunities get easier if you go to a college with more like connections, but like, like genuinely, like, I think the biggest, most important thing that like will define how you do in life is just like, like, like how you live. And it's not like what college you go to. No one in the workplace judges you based on what college you go to. And it's not like you'll have a, like a better life if you go to a better college or you'll, you're smarter if you go to a better, like a better college. Like it truly does not, like, it, it doesn't matter as much as a lot of like uh, media makes it out to be, yeah. Hey, thanks. Jeannie, do, would you like to continue? Yeah, no, I just wanted to really emphasize what Chris and Flora were saying, and Jeannie, honestly, everyone, I really agree with them. Um, because like at the end of the day, you know, you can still get somewhere without going to like a T5 or a T10 university. Bennett, I think you didn't answer the question. Do you want to add anything? Yeah, I think I said it before, but I guess I'll, I'll say it again. Um, I think my, like the biggest thing that I had going for me was that I was doing things that I was genuinely interested in. And like, I chose to do the things that I was genuinely interested in. And I think that that showed, right? So obviously, um, obviously like when you, when you submit things um, and, and talk about things that you're interested in, um, I think it's important not to be fake there. And that's not really saying that you should learn to love the things that you're doing. Rather, I think it's important to also do the things that you love. Hey, thank you very much. I would like to thank our, our panelists. Uh, they already had great success. And then our uh, parents listened to them. Uh, so uh, our parents and students, you heard their personal stories and also uh, their uh, practices they did while uh, doing while their applications. Uh, so you, we, we try to answer the questions. Actually, uh, they answer their questions from their perspective. Uh, we will have more programs like this uh, in the up, during summertime. 
uh, and uh, is the last thing I would like to say. So you heard them and use at your own risk. Okay, so they, uh, everybody's own personal idea. So that's not, uh, 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 there is no, uh, you know, how you can say it, um, just, uh, this is not one or zero. So there are different uh, paths and different ways. So um, I hope it helps you. Have a nice, have a great day. Uh, we'll see you uh, hopefully in the upcoming programs. Yeah, bye. Thank you.